and welcome to the Alpine Club. My name is Polly Townsend, I'm the curator and one of the exhibiting artists in this exhibition called A Wider Landscape. The title of the exhibition refers to the sense that landscape, and in particular mountain-based work, has long been a male-dominated genre. I wanted to widen out or counterbalance that picture by having an exclusively female show. Historically speaking, women were not considered to have the stamina to make landscape painting, uh, let alone mountainous ones, and even less so to climb and to paint them. I think we can safely say that is no longer the case, um, but it is still an issue that women's work doesn't get as much coverage as men's. Here at the Alpine Club, they have a wonderful and renowned collection of historic mountain-based artwork, but like the majority of collections worldwide, it is heavily male-dominated. I wanted to bring to light some of the women's work from the collection, and I also wanted to bring in a group of contemporary artists who utilise mountains in their work. The artists in this exhibition work with a variety of mediums. Uh, we've got oils, watercolours, acrylics, drawings, woodblocks, lithographs and etchings. Um, and we've also got a wide range of substrates, uh, paper, canvas, wood, metal, and even this beautiful piece uh, by Jenny Pockley, which is done on sandpaper. Um, mountains are the key feature in all the works, but they're represented in a variety of ways. Um, some are acutely observed, some are based on memory, some are amalgamations of places, and some are purely based on fantasy or even dreams. As the first piece seen when we entered the exhibition and hung at eye level, Lisa Riggs' painting forces us to immediately confront the woman in the landscape. This provocative piece called Lucia and the Black Swan encapsulates both the wild and the domestic. Using an emotionally charged colour palette, Riggs speaks of longing and desire. A desire to be in the wilderness, a desire to not be invisible, and a desire to be softly excited by these jagged mountains and this black swan. You can really see the drama of the mountains in this painting by Jenny Pockley. The quality of the surface is almost as powdery as the snow it evokes, and the way the light hits the mountains brings to life an understanding of the mystery and the occasional terror of the mountains. And from the macro to the micro, here we have the work of Serena Kermi and Zoe Bedloe. We can see in these pieces an interest in the intimacy of landscape. Bedloe is perhaps looking at the spaces that go unnoticed within the mountains, encouraging us to stay a while and to occupy a connected state of mind with her, the artist. Moving on, we see here the work of Janet Johnson. Johnson, who is the temporary keeper of pictures here at the Alpine Club and who gave me access and helped me locate some of the works in this show, is also a very accomplished artist. Uh, these two pieces, the Refugio Vivier by day and by night, um, independently transition not only from light to dark, but from warm to cool tones, reminding us of the powerful and often dangerous impact of the sun in the mountains. Janet Johnson and several of the other artists in this exhibition were plein air or outdoors. I was very keen to understand their experience from a woman's perspective. I asked them if they go alone or with others and what that experience was like for them. They told me about the advantages of working alone, um, as you would expect things like concentration, lack of distraction, the freedom not to compromise on location. Uh, but paradoxically and often within the same breath, they also told me that those were the exact issues negatively impacted by working alone as a woman. Safety played a key role for them in the ability to immerse and in the choices they made about location. Based on this, I wrote a small wall text about women's safety. It's nestled here in amongst the other safety features of the Alpine Club. Uh, it's something we don't think or talk about within the genre of landscape work, and I strongly believe we should be having these discussions. Certainly in terms of the historical sense of women not having the stamina to make landscape work, it's become very clear to me that women at times have more stamina to make work in spite of issues like harassment, the inability to immerse, and the kind of compromises that they have to make regarding locations. Moving on, we have here the work of Serena Kermi. Serena's work anchors back to where she grew up on a sailboat moving across continents. We can see here the sense of her weaving together half-remembered, half-imagined images into these wonderfully evocative paintings. I was thrilled to be able to include the work of Emma Stibben. Stibben is a Royal Academician and one of her many acclaims is her residency with the Friends of Scott Polar Research Institute to Antarctica in 2013. That residency culminated in this piece called Ice Cloud Antarctica. 
While Stibbon is clearly driven by the beauty and the drama of nature, the very delicate touches of hand-painted colour in this otherwise monochrome intaglio print hint at her concerns for the fragility of our environment. The effects of climate change are a strong concern across all of her work. I'm delighted that I will be following in Emma Stibbon's footprints early next year, when by coincidence I will also be the artist in residence in Antarctica. Stibbon and I not only share a love of remote, isolated landscapes and a great concern for the impact of climate change, but we also both employ a degree of economy in our work. She in the use of a restrained palette and I in the use of a blank substrate. However, colour is somewhere where we part ways. This piece was done following my residency in Death Valley, near an area known as the Artist's Palette. As the name would suggest, the geology has an incredible colour intensity, something that you wouldn't believe possible in a landscape. Moving on, but continuing the theme of economy, is this wonderful work by Molly Dicker. This aquatint of the Bernese Oberland comprises just three main subtly toned segments, but the handling is such that we get an incredible understanding of the scale and the depth of this vast area. Molly Dick has sadly passed away in the year 2000, but while researching this work, I came across a contemporary printmaker with a shared surname. I reached out to her and discovered that it was her daughter who has since been to see this exhibition. She and I were both thrilled that this artwork has been raised from the archives and is finally getting the recognition that it deserves. Behind me in this cabinet, we have the work of Una Cameron. What we see here is an artist introducing the importance of bold design and reproducibility in her work. Cameron was not only an extremely accomplished artist, but she was also a formidable climber, making many first ascents in the Alps and wearing trousers when it wasn't common for women to do so. Due to an outstanding climbing record, she was elected president of the Ladies Alpine Club in 1957 and was one of the most prominent contributors to its journal. What we see here are several of her artworks which were often used to illustrate those journals, including this one which features as a repetitive motif. Myself and many other members of the Alpine Club will have been to or will immediately recognise this location. This is Everest Base Camp, Northside, Tibet. It's painted by Philippa Anna Frederica Stevenson. This painting was made from a photograph taken in 1933. It's important when we look at this piece to understand the history of the region at that time. Reconnaissance missions and first attempts were being made to summit Everest, but the first official successful attempt had not yet been made. There was a lot of excitement within the Alpine societies in the UK, and this would have caused wide public interest. This painting, although not done on site, is a representation of the creative curiosity about that region that was emerging at the time. Everest was still relatively unknown and it was up to artists to help fill in the visual side of understanding its appeal. We get a real sense of location in this painting by Hilda Heckler. She strongly accentuates the rhythms of the structure to give great effect of scale, even within what is quite a modest sized painting. Heckler was an accomplished climber and a member of the Ladies Alpine Club and is famously quoted as saying that the best place from which to draw one mountain is from halfway up another which I completely agree with. Hecla tells us quite a lot about this place. Uh, we see the ice summit of the Al Alain Inhorn rising beyond the grass here, and the rock ridge of the Egana on the left of the picture. Uh, the Alpha Bell, partly obscured by cloud, is on the right above the Fee Glacier. The Fee Glacier is in the south of Switzerland, close to the Italian border, and as with 95 of the 96 mapped glaciers in Switzerland, it's shown a considerable reduction in its extent, primarily due to the change in climate. Historically, artists have played a very important role in helping us understand glacial change, as drawings and paintings were the primary means of recording and documenting geography before cameras were invented. I will leave you here with the wonderfully provocative work of Margaret Pilkington, uh, displayed here appropriately at waist height. We have to question why the history of mountain art has been so predominantly male when there is very clearly a much wider landscape that we should be taking into account. There are many more pieces in this exhibition. I hope you will visit and see how mountains look through a woman's gaze. Thank you.